Yeah. Uh, and I guess as we might have, have seen, even as we're just studying, this is a virtual launch for the Open Mapping Hub uh, by the Humanitarian Open Street Map team. And this is uh, specifically for the hub uh, that would cover the eastern and southern parts of Africa. And more information will be shared about this. And even as this virtual launch is happening, I know most of us probably do follow um, other accounts by the Humanitarian Open Street Map team, but we would like to request you as well to follow our new accounts for this hub so that you can keep in touch with all the updates that will be coming in, all the opportunities that will be available for the community as well. Uh, so uh, make sure you go to Facebook, uh, check out Twitter as well, and follow us there, uh, like the page as well. And also you can take note of this email address in case you might have any inquiries uh, in future. Uh, about the hub and everything else. And uh, even before uh, we continue, uh, I would like to pass it on now to, um, to just share as well that as the event is ongoing, we'd like to request you to uh, kindly share as uh, about the event, uh, any comments, any questions that you have, uh, you can post them on the chat box directly here on Zoom. For those joining on YouTube and Facebook, you can also post them there as well. The team will be taking note of those and uh, all, all, all the questions will be answered ideally at the end of this session. Uh, also just to share this session, we'll have um, two sections. So we'll have uh, an, um, short presentations by the members of the Open Mapping Hub, of this, this specific Open Mapping Hub, then we'll also have a panel discussion afterwards. So yeah, keep, keep all the comments and questions coming in. Uh, and at this point, uh, because of time, I'll pass it on to the regional director for the Eastern and Southern Africa Hub, Ms. Monica Antiga, who will share more about uh, what the hub is all about and everything that's coming with that. So uh, passing it on to you, Monica. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, let me just see. I just wanted to make sure that um, my video is on. OK. Um, over the last uh, two and a half months, I have posed one question to my team at HOT and the OSM leaders and partners that I've had an opportunity to talk to. And the question has been, what storyline do we want to write over the next four to five years as part of the OSM community, but also the ecosystem in the region? To date, I have about 30 responses. A few of them include um, OpenStreetMap data is used to power leading businesses and startups or innovations in the region. Thanks to OSM, millions of families in Africa can now access safe drinking water. OSM communities in 22 countries in the region have raised over 2 million funding. An OSM community in DRC has solely led a disaster response um, activation following a landslide. Um, we've been pondering a lot on that, but what, what does OSM data being used to power leading businesses and startups or innovations in the region mean for organizations or organization leads here today on this call? What does an OSM advocate in Madagascar in Egypt um, need to help them live their OSM passion daily? Um, that is be able to add data on a water access point randomly while at the access point and not during a project mapping exercise or a mapathon. But most importantly, what's the role of the Open Mapping Hub in enabling the realization of the storylines that um, we've been hearing from all of us on this call? Reflecting on these questions, one quickly realizes that, yes, the OSM challenges are, ch are changing. The profile, the priorities, the capabilities of an OSM contributor user are changing. National uh, or subnational urban planning is being driven by climate change predictors or models. Which brings me to what becomes overall our main goal as the Open Mapping Hub, Eastern and Southern Africa, 
to drive a paradigm shift in the way all of us here today engage with and use OSM data and tools. This is important. This is the only way out. And I like to think of how this all plays out using the analogy of a ship navigating deep seas and how it gets to show or stays at sea for months or years. Um, and the months or years is the next four to five, five years. We have the ship, this is OSM, OSM data. Then we have a long list of um, what we call our natural man-made man story factors. So it's the disasters, it's challenges like contributory tension, it's a technical and financial resource limitations, it's a data quality challenges, it's addressing national and subnational issues, health and migration issues. So all this, the natural and the man-made factors is, I like to call that the wind, also known as the winds. And that that component, which is where our strength, our uniqueness, our competitive advantage comes in, is that our ship has many, many navigators. There's you, there's me, there's the hub, um, there's other tech hubs in the region, there's governments at all levels. We have NGOs, we have the youth mapper chapters, we have private sector, we have you know, OSM communities, former informal groups, and all these people are steering this one ship. So it's very important for the ship's many navigators to steer the ship, considering the wind effects, but also understanding the power that's in the hands of the navigators. So they can use the wind as a good break to just keep the, the ship still, as a device for making a tight turn or to just maneuver um, a good sail. Therefore, it's imperative that we travel together. Uh, hard work lies ahead. Uh, when, when I reflect on the 30 issues, uh, we invite you to travel with us for the next four to five years as we work with all of you to build and test locally led solutions and products that can address map data quality, the use of map data while growing the skills of the different OSM users, organizations and contributors in the region. This is a spirit that we want to embody through the hub, the Open Mapping Hub Eastern and Southern Africa. The name was informed by a goal um, at heart to be an equitable space for everyone where we can innovate around OSM data and tools openly. Um, and for this region, it's uh, across the 22 countries. So I want to conclude by saying thank you for joining us today. This is a really exciting day for all of us at HOT. It's an honor to have your company as we share with you the journey we want to take through community and partnerships, grant investment and collaboration, which we'll be talking about um, over the next uh, hour, uh, led by my, my colleagues, uh, Geoffrey and David. Thank you, Laura. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Monica. Uh, that was a great overview of what the hub uh, would be about, uh, all the activities that will be involved. Glad to hear a lot of communities being mentioned, not just even uh, mapping communities, but other tech hubs within the region. So I'm uh, really glad to hear all of that. Yeah, just also to reiterate, if you have any questions for Monica at this point, uh, feel free to post them on chat. Any comments as well, uh, you can do so as well. Uh, if you're on social media, you can also share live by using the hashtag Launch, and we'll be able to see all that as they come in. Uh, also saw a number of comments uh, regarding the slides. Uh, we didn't have slides for that section, uh, so no worries. Uh, but we'll be sure to share uh, this after afterwards. Yeah, so at this point, I would uh, pass it on to the next speaker to, to share more as well um, on this. So uh, David. Thank you so much, Laura and Monica. Um, hello everyone. Just seeing the screen. Okay. Hello everyone. Uh, great to have you all. And um, uh, my name is David Luswata, Partnerships Manager in the Eastern and Southern. Uh, David, I think your voice is very low, and uh, you need to zoom into your slides um, to have Matt's full screen showing. That's what we are doing with partnerships, or what we want to do with partnerships in the coming months and years as we um, um, 
implement the work of, of the hub in the region, in the Eastern and Southern Africa region. So the Humanitarian Open Street Map team um, as an organization um, starting last year for the most part um, has been working towards um, a world where first of all, everyone is counted, uh, where map data is accessible and used in decisions that save and improve lives and uh, everyone can engage and contribute to the map. This is uh, an exciting journey that we are working as the humanitarian open street map team that has uh, led the organization to um, setting up regional hubs uh, of which we are launching the Eastern and Southern Africa regional hub today. Uh, but we have other hubs that have been set up. We have one in the Asia Pacific region. We have one in West Africa, which has also uh, started. We already have uh, staff starting to work on the West Africa one. The Asia Pacific one is already up and running. And then possibly later uh, next year, we'll have the East, uh, the Latin America one um, being started also. Now, we as the humanitarian open street map team uh, have this five-year vision which is to map an area that is home to one billion people um, and specifically people uh, that are part of populations that are experiencing poverty and possibly living at um, high levels uh, at, at high risk of disasters so those communities uh, that um, at high risk of disasters are vulnerable to disasters are the ones that will be um, working towards mapping. This is going to happen across 94 countries in um, the entire, um, uh, across the world, 94 countries across the four regional hubs that we have set up. And specifically in Eastern and Southern Africa, we'll be um, looking at 22 countries, which is going to be discussed later on in the slides here. Um, how are we going to achieve that vision of uh, mapping an area that is home to uh, 1 billion people? Um, we really believe at, at, at heart that uh, working through the different regional hubs, working through the different communities, engaging different partners, we are going to be able to engage um, five times more mappers than what we've been having in the past. So we are going to be working towards engaging more mappers, towards working with more contributors to OpenStreetMap to be able to um, help us to get to that um, um, goal of 1 billion people across the entire world, that is 94 countries that we are uh, looking at as priority nations. Um, but we also work to grow uh, local edits, that means uh, getting to have local communities, local uh, groups of mappers contributing to the map in whatever way possible according to their location. So we'll be working to engage those um, as well. We'll be working to engage more partners. Uh, this is uh, um, a journey that we believe is not just for the humanitarian open street map team, it's not just for uh, the communities we work with, the OSM communities we work with, but it is a journey that is going to include a number of partners, a number of partners within um, especially our region here that uh, we are focusing on the Eastern and Southern Africa region. And in uh, terms of working with these different partners, we have uh, developed five areas that we are calling uh, five impact areas that we are working with, we're going to be working with in the next uh, possibly five years to uh, reach that goal of mapping one, an area that is home to one billion people. And these impact areas include what we uh, have defined as, as the organization. Um, I must note that uh, this is yet to be confirmed by our uh, board of directors, but uh, uh, just sharing this with you as we launch so that you can have a picture of where we are going. Um, the areas include uh, disasters and climate resilience. So we'll be working closely with organizations um, communities and partners that are within that space of disasters and climate resilience. We'll be looking at um, working with public health uh, projects, projects that are within the public health space, uh, projects that are focused on gender equality, uh, where we'll be looking at, uh, you know, participation of all uh, groups of people within the mapping processes that will be going on in the region. We are looking at also um, focusing on sustainable cities and communities. 
uh, which will have a big um, portion of urban dwelling and, and infrastructure that is um, you know, accessible or uh, that provides service delivery um, for the different populations within those urban settings. So we'll be working towards that. Um, all projects that are within that, that space will be um, really interested in discussing and, and seeing how we can work together. Uh, the final one is displacement and uh, safe migration. Um, this is uh, an area that as hold we've, we've had um, several projects in. And yes, as you can see, we are scaling down, uh, if I may say, the impact areas. We, if you look at our wood site, we've had um, 11 uh, different areas that we've been implementing projects in. We uh, bring the number down. Uh, this is not to <clears throat> exclude some of those areas, but to um, concentrate our efforts and impact in uh, some of these areas that are possibly cross-cutting across different uh, countries. While we are working towards that and working for um, working towards achieving those goals, we are looking to build partnerships with different um, groups of, of organizations or um, uh, individuals that are working to um, deliver some services or deliver humanitarian aid within the region. Uh, we are looking at um, mapping communities. So these include the OSM communities, these include youth mappers and other mapping clubs that do exist within the region. We'll be working um, uh, towards creating some more of those uh, within the region. And then uh, we will be looking at uh, engaging and um, having conversations and building partnerships with humanitarian organizations, the Red Cross, MSF and several others within the humanitarian space. So we'll be engaging and discussing more. Uh, government is central to mapping populations that are um, within this region. So we'll be um, speaking more with um, different local governments, municipalities, um, city of governments and several others. Uh, we'll be also um, several others such as uh, NGOs within the civil society space, the academia, um, and, and several development partners that do have projects going on within the region. So we'll be engaging those, and we, if you represent any of those that are highlighted here, we'll be um, really interested in discussing. Uh, feel free to reach out and uh, let's discuss how we can map this region together. Um, and with that, I'd like to pass it on to my colleague, uh, Geoffrey, to discuss more about uh, um, the communities. Yeah, thank you, uh, David. Uh, really very glad and excited that we are launching the, the hub today. Uh, it's really uh, exciting that we are at, at this level. Uh, my name is, is Geoffrey Katerega. I'm the community manager uh, for the Eastern and Southern Africa Open Mapping Hub. And uh, looking forward to be working with uh, all of you, uh, members of the OSM communities in different countries uh, in Africa. Uh, to reach some of those uh, goals that David has just mentioned. Um, over the next slide. Yeah, so really our goal um, as, as the community team here is to uh, facilitate the growth of uh, diverse, vibrant and uh, uh, sustainable OSM communities in uh, 22 countries in Eastern and Southern Africa. Uh, as you can see uh, on this map. So it's uh, really uh, in a, you know, a wide geographical area starting all the way from uh, Egypt um, up to Southern Namibia and Madagascar. So really an, extens an extensive list of countries that we are going to be uh, working with and uh, I'm, I'm super uh, excited to be engaging with you uh, all. Over the next slide. So the, I think for me, the most uh, interesting bit is that we are really doing it together with uh, all these uh, groups in uh, different countries. Um, at the moment, we have uh, 22 OSM communities in 19 different countries, uh, but also a very strong, uh, big number of youth mappers chapters. Um, so far, we have 71 youth mappers chapters in 14 
countries uh, out of these 22. And I know several of them are also on this call. Um, and really, as we engage with OSM communities in these countries uh, to do all of this work, uh, we are going to be working with you uh, directly um, over the next slide. Yeah, um, one of the other things we really want to see grow is uh, local leadership uh, within the open street map uh, movement um, and ecosystem. Uh, one of the things uh, we have uh, within HOT are the HOT voting members. And currently um, we do have 16 voting members from, uh, from the region, uh, but they only come from seven countries. So. Uh, as we also do this, we also want to see that uh, this number uh, you know, grows bigger so that uh, uh, voices from the region can you not know, take part in decision making in what happens within the open street map movement, uh, not only as hoti voting members, but also within uh, the open street map foundation. So from you know, leading your own co local communities, uh, it will also be good for uh, for you to also engage uh, at, at high level and become, for example, it would be nice to see uh, you know a, a board member, for example, on the OSM Foundation from the region. And as we work uh, this uh, in these years, we through this project, uh, that's one of also the goals that we want to see uh, local leadership uh, rising up to the uh, up to that level. Uh, mm -hmm. The next slide. Um, yeah, so one of the things we did uh, last year was also to talk to uh, open map communities to find out uh, what challenges do they face so that as we, uh, we engage with you, uh, we, we try to also make sure that uh, those challenges are kind of, you know, uh, solved. Um, and some of the biggest challenges that came out, out were around uh, volunteer uh, engagements uh, like commitment, retention, um, skills like people need like more skills to be able to participate, um, but also uh, time, uh, volunteer time. So how do we, you know, navigate all these challenges? So by working together, uh, we'll be able to address these challenges, and with support from the Open Mapping Hub, we can uh, overcome some of these so that we can participate more uh, in in, to, in the mapping process. Uh, the next slide. The other challenge that really came out uh, was uh, from the part participants in the in the uh, workshops we had was around funding. Um, so people to be able to participate in open mapping needs uh, funds around for funds for internet, um, you know, volunteer incentives, uh, volunteer support, um, even things like finding uh, an, an office space to work from. Uh, so how can we, you know, um, find funds so that uh, that shouldn't be a blocker for people to be able to participate and grow uh, their community? So that's one of the things also uh, that we want to be able to uh, address. Uh, the next slide. Yeah, and the other thing uh, was also around um, resources, so tools, uh, equipment, um, yeah, internet access. So when you look at most of these uh, things that can be, uh, you know, solved uh, with some bit of funding. Uh, so how do also OSM communities be able to raise funds uh, in different ways to be able to meet some of these challenges? So as we uh, tailor our uh, our support to OSM communities, these are some of the things we uh, we need to uh, address. But also, we want to continue these kinds of uh, engagements with you to uh, to listen to you and uh, find out what 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 how better can we support you uh, as the Open Mapping Hub to be able to overcome some of these challenges and also understand those other challenges that are not mentioned here. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so really our support, community support will uh, focus around, uh, you know, provision of funding and I'll be sharing uh, in the announcement section what we are going to be uh, doing or providing communities in terms of funds uh, through our community grants, uh, but also supporting um, events, uh, supporting community events, especially we have the, uh, the OSM Africa Mapathon that is continuing to run every month. Um, 
which is going to be hosted by uh, Malawi uh, next month, and also supporting the uh, set of the Map Africa conference uh, that is happening in uh, November, and also other events that are locally um, organized. So if you want to organize uh, a meetup for your community uh, in country and engage your uh, different members, that's something we really want to um, to support and um, make uh, facilitate it happening. Uh, the other big component is capacity building and also leadership development. So uh, you know, running trainings. Uh, but we also believe that uh, there is a lot a lot of um, knowledge and capacity within the OSM communities that we uh, we have in the different countries. So we also want to facilitate the knowledge exchange so that if someone in Namibia uh, has the skills, then he can go to you know to the neighboring country to uh, Zambia or uh, Zimbabwe and offer an OSM training, um, so that we kind of facilitate that kind of knowledge exchange from community to community and uh, work together uh, to develop and uh, grow open street map in the region, so that at the end we uh, really have you know vibrant and sustainable uh, communities which can stand on their own. Uh, even beyond uh, this kind of uh, project and engagement. So um, we are really looking forward to working with uh, uh, each one and uh, each one of you uh, in, in the different OSM communities as we, uh, as we advance uh, OpenStreetMap and open mapping in the region. Um, yeah, thank you and uh, back to you, uh, Laura. Uh, great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Geoffrey and David. Uh, I, I, I'd like to assume that uh, that was very descriptive since um, <laughs> we're still not seeing any questions. Uh, but I uh, really, really great to see all the opportunities that are coming through this, uh, all the support that OSM communities are able to, are, are going to be able to access. And also glad to see as well that uh, this was also done. Um, sort of together in the community, sort of uh, trying to see the challenges that they're facing so that what the hub provides actually meet, meets the needs of, the, of these communities. So uh, really exciting to see that. Now, uh, just to see <laughs> if, if we have been following through, uh, we have a quick quiz um, for us to participate in uh, before we move to the next session of um of today's launch so uh just a minute okay um yeah i'm going to take you through the quiz um so get your fingers ready we are going to be dropping the answers in the chat um yeah so the first question i have three questions and uh, the first one is how many countries will the eastern and southern africa Open mapping hub support. So 18, 22, 24. Uh, do drop your answer in the chat. Yes, first thing as <laughs> okay. All right, um, yeah, the answers have come in and uh, the correct answer is uh, 22 and that is B. So thank you for, uh, for the answers. Uh, next question. Um, one of our goals is to map an area home to 100 million people, 1 billion people, 1 million people. Uh, yes, answers in the chat. Yeah, Laura, I think you can see from the answers that uh, people were paying uh, attention. So that's really good. Um, yeah, the uh, correct answer is uh, 1 billion people. And uh, so congratulations, everyone. Uh, so the last one, uh, OpenStreetMap uh, celebrated its birthday uh, uh, of recent. How old is OpenStreetMap now? Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, looks like we have uh, only diehard open street map people in the room. All the answers are correct. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, the correct answer is uh, 17 years. Uh, open street map has made 17 years and we are really glad to be uh, part of uh, this uh, journey. Okay, uh, that's the end of the poll. Um, so next, uh, uh, over to you, uh, Laura. Great, great. Uh, really amazing to see that people are actually attentive and actually also people have their uh, nose in the OSM space. Uh, but I don't know, Geoffrey, if, if you promised uh, a gift or two for some people here. Uh, I guess that's for you to decide. <laughs> uh, but I will now move on to the next uh, uh, section where we'll have a quick panel discussion. Um, and we uh, invited four amazing guest, guest speakers within the region to share with us today. So I'll actually just uh, mention their names and then they would uh, give uh, a brief introduction about themselves, then we could start. Uh, so we, if it's okay, if we could start with you, Mr. Emmanuel Tembo, so uh, you can just come off mute and share, uh, introduce yourself briefly. Thank you very much, uh, Laura. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. My name is Emmanuel Tembo. Do I need to put it on my video? Um, no. yes. yes, if possible. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good more. Good afternoon. I said good morning. Good afternoon, colleagues, and I'm happy to be here. My name is Emmanuel Tembo. I'm a project manager for the National Land Titling Program in Zambia, but also responsible for the National Spatial Data Infrastructure. So I'm, I'm responsible for uh, the National Spatial Data Infrastructure. In terms of my background, I'm a land surveyor by profession, having qualified as such in 1987, uh, after which I've worked with um, local government and in academia, mostly University of Zambia and University of Botswana where I completed my stint in 2015, thereabouts. And I've, uh, since 2017, been working under the National Spatial Data Infrastructure. Uh, and so I'm interested to see how open source map uh, and the like would uh, help us build that infrastructure. So I'm very happy to be here. Um, I think that's, that's about it, about me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Emmanuel, and glad to have you here today. And next, uh, we have Ms. Royal. Uh, kindly come off mute as well and introduce yourself. All right, um, let me see how that works. All right, so good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Minare Royal Mavake. I am a lecturer in the Department of Land and Property Sciences at the Namibia University of Science and Technology here in Ventuk, Namibia. Uh, my background is land administration. I previously worked with the Shack Dwellers Federation of Namibia in the Community Land Information Program. I was initially introduced to uh, OpenStreetMap while studying uh, for my master's in Earth Observation for Land Administration. So uh, one of my main goals or research areas is to see how we can get more people to contribute to OpenStreetMap data so that it can support uh, informal settlement upgrading. So yeah, so basically in terms of introduction, that's, that's me and I'm looking forward to an interesting discussion. Thank you for having me, Laura. Amazing, amazing. Uh, before we move to the next speaker, also just a reminder, even as the this panel discussion starts. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on chat. Um, next, we have Mr. Innocent Maholi. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me and see me at the same time. 
So hi, uh, my name is Innocent Maholi. Uh, I am the executive director of an organization known as Open Map Development Tanzania. We abbreviate it as OMDTZ. Uh, we are an NGO that is uh, based in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, uh, doing mapping and GIS kind of work. Uh, but my background has always been, uh, I have been working with HOT for around five, six years since 2015 after my graduation days. And I was acting as a deputy country manager uh, ever since, uh, you know, uh, underseeing and, uh, you know, undertaking all the uh, hot projects in the country and, and, and in the region as well. I'm happy to be here and I'm also excited that today we are launching the East, Eastern and, and Southern Africa um, hub. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Innocent, for joining us today. And lastly, we have Mr. Elijah Karanja. Uh, hi, uh, um, you can see me now? Yes, we can. Uh, hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Elijah Karanja. Uh, I work with the International Federation of Red Cross as an information and GIS officer and as well the coordinator for missing maps in the Africa region. Uh, I, I work to strengthen and uh, strengthen the capacity of 49 national society in the region to enhance preparedness in disaster management and as well in, uh, in disasters as well. Uh, my background is on uh, GIS and remote sensing and I've been using uh, OSM data for a while. And uh, I'm looking forward to this interesting uh, discussion and see how we can strengthen local communities in the region. How about you, Laura? Thank you so much, Elijah, for, for joining us today. So as you've seen, uh, we have amazing panelists uh, working in the mapping, uh, just fashion, humanitarian, and even open laughing space. And so we, we'll just get started. Uh, and I'll start with you, Elijah, actually. Uh, so uh, our first question would, is that we were wondering, in, in case of a disaster such as an earthquake, uh, fire or flooding, um, what are some of the challenges that humanitarian workers usually face uh, when uh, executing rescue missions? And how uh, does humanitarian, um, how can humanitarian operations benefit from um, uh, platforms like OpenStreetMap and OSM data in general? Thank you for that question. Uh, I think I, I, I'll start with the first question, which you mentioned in the, in the wake of disasters like uh, earthquake and, and uh, other disasters like uh, what are the challenges that humanitarian workers face. I think I'll highlight uh, what, three points. I think uh, the first is always the limited availability of impact data of the affected people in the areas. And this with uh, the limitation as well uh, uh, causes uh, unclear response on co of contingency plans and as well uh, unclear objectives by actors. And this, again, without uh, data availability becomes a challenge and as well. And secondly, is an uncoordinated response among actors. This as well is due to limited availability of data. You see that, uh, and this causes as well to the duplication of efforts and as well duplication of data. And as well, again, uh, the instances whereby this uh, sharing of uh, misinformation as well. And thirdly is a lack of data or uh, limited availability of data as well uh, uh, reduces or prevents the measurement of aid effectiveness and its, and its impact. And this uh, has been evidence uh, of the records movement because you realize that uh, as much as we try again to respond to certain disasters, you realize uh, the effectiveness is not, at times is not felt. This is because of either limited availability of data and as much as we want to, uh, to reach or uh, help the first vulnerable again becomes a becomes a, a challenge due to uh, limited availability of data. And again, another thing is always a limited capacity or, or limited local capacity on the ground. Because we realize uh, when a disaster occurs, uh, so many humanitarian actors, they will go, and, uh, they will go try to uh, help and as well. But again, what if the disaster uh, comes or comes to an end? How do we leave communities? Are they prepared? And this becomes one of the things whereby the need to strengthen uh, local communities, the need to strengthen their, their literacy in data to an extent that they can be able to manage or be able to enhance their preparedness in, uh, in disasters. 
So that's the first question on the whereby in case of a disasters, in case of a disaster uh, occurs. So basically, it's more it, it lies around data. So if we have availability of accurate data, if we have availability of uh, efficient data, uh, there is efficient response and there is timely response uh, during disasters. Uh, on the second question, whereby you mentioned, uh, in which ways can humanitarian operations benefit from more same data? I'll give an. I'll give an example of uh, the Mozambique cyclone and the DRC Congo volcanic eruption. I think during those two uh, operations, we relied mostly on OSM data. And when the Mozambique cyclone occurred uh, in the, in, uh, on the early phase whereby uh, the confusion, whereby there was no data of women people have been affected, there was no data of, uh, we, uh, of accessibility of roads. So when, when OSM communities came together and were able to rapid map the areas that have been affected, this really helped uh, uh, not only the Red Cross but as well other humanitarian actors that are, were able to uh, to to identify like the number of people who have been affected, which roads have been affected, and how can we reach uh, people who have been affected during uh, during the, that disaster. And this is information that has really aided, and as well it was very effective by actors at least. Uh, enhance efficient uh, response during disasters, and as well, the aid and the impact of, of the response was felt as well. Again, this helped. Uh, again, this really helped us during even uh, uh, developing contingency plans uh, during uh, the two operations, both for the Niragongo volcanic eruption as well for the Mozambique uh, uh, Mozambique uh, cyclone. The most uh, an interesting also was the, uh, the Niragongo eruption. Uh, most of the data, uh, maybe on WASH, uh, uh, the key key data that mostly we really used was mostly in the same data. OSA data really has really played a key role when it comes to response, maybe all in the records movement, and I believe in other uh, humanitarian actors, it has become uh, really of help and as well efficient, and that has really enhanced efficiency and uh, timely response to, to disasters. Again, I gave credit as well to the OSM communities for their rapid response to, 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 to be able to quickly be able to map those areas and provide data to, to, to those humanitarian actors. I think for me, credit uh, as well should go to OSM communities and as, as well to OSM people who are always volunteers, who are always willing to to contribute, to be able to, to offer, to map and as well, because this has really, really helped us as a movement to be able to timely response, uh, respond to disasters and as well enhance preparedness even before a disaster occurs. I think that's all for my side, Laura, over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Eliza, for that comprehensive answer and really uh, amazing to hear how, how the Federation uses uh, OSM data for their humanitarian operations. I guess a great question to the audiences uh, in the country that you're in. Do you know your Red Cross uh, or Red Crescent Society and uh, as an OSM community, how, how are you supporting them as well uh, in their work? Uh, next, we'll move to Mr. Tembo. So uh, within the African region, when you're talking about government and data, uh, we have very few cases uh, where we are able to share impactful stories. But uh, we can see that actually in Zambia, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources is carrying out uh, the registration of all properties in the country. Um, so uh, are you able to highlight some of the ways that the ministry has incorporated OpenStreetMap data uh, in this exercise? Yes, thank you very much uh, for that question. Um, so uh, I think we all know and recognize that uh, as far as um, uh, any titling program is concerned, the first step is to ensure that we understand the extent of which land we are uh, we are um, uh, we are titling. So, as a, as a ministry, the first requirement was to have for data. Uh, it, we started with uh, what we call informal areas to actually carry out this work, and so these informal areas required to have uh, building footprints. Uh, would have to identify the boundaries because before we title, we also requ were required to do what is known as a local area plans. 
according to the Urban and Regional Planning Act. And so the first thing was to collect all the base information. And that included, for instance, where the roads are and so on. And the National Spatial Data Infrastructure itself has the collection of OSM data, which then is incorporated together with aerial imager, imagery that was collected or mapped um, as way back as 2018. Where we had deficiencies in uh, aerial imagery would then collect that information through uh, drone mapping. So essentially, uh, OSM data forms the basis from which we then can be able to do the plans, the local area plans, which then feed into uh, the, na the national uh, spatial data infrastructure itself. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that, uh, Mr. Tembo. Um, and also glad to hear more African countries are uh, working to develop their SDIs um, and also including platforms uh, or sources like OpenStreetMap in this. Uh, I guess also just a follow up question on that. Uh, at times when um, we're talking about land governance, uh, we tend to sort of associate it with precise land surveying. So just wondering as well if there are any challenges uh, when using OpenStreetMap data uh, in this case. Yeah, I think that's a very good question. We, uh... I think like for most of the region, uh, southern region especially, we use some land survey acts, which uh, mostly um, based not on general princ uh, boundary principles, but on fixed boundary. And so when we want to title, for example, a piece of land, uh, there's always that aspect that um, OSM data might not well fit uh, the use because it basically looks at uh, general boundary principles. However, within the context of our law, uh, there is a portion where when we apply to the Surveyor General's office, we can then be able to use uh, open street um, data to actually map out uh, property boundaries uh, where they are visible and use the concept of general uh, boundary principles. And we have found this to be working very well in, in regularizing areas which were formerly informal in nature and creating uh, the database so that this now becomes part of the formal uh, land market. Yeah, so in many respects, um, OSM data has saved us well in, in the sense that as long as we know that it, uh, the standards are set, we are using the same projection, we are using the same... Um, the data, we have no problem in incorporating that data into uh, the mainstream work that uh, is being undertaken uh, undertaken under the Titan program. We must say also that under the NSDI, we have incorporated this data now onto the platform. So the, the, um, if you go to the map.gov.zm, which is the platform for uh, our national spatial data infrastructure, you will find that that information, uh, OSM data sits there. We also have a, a data hub where um, we, call, we are calling the Zambia data hub, where also most of this data actually sits. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for, for answering that, uh, Mr. Tembo. I hope this is useful as well uh, to everyone else uh, on, on how diverse the uses of OSM um, data is even beyond uh, humanitarian action and uh, I guess for social impact uses as well. Uh, next up, we uh, get to Ms. Royal. Um, there is a project that's, uh, that's being uh, sort of being done at the moment by the Na Namibia University of Science and Technology um, to update OSM data uh, in the capital of Namibia. Could you share more about this project, what it's about and all that, yeah. All right, thank you, Lara, for the question. Um, first, I'm just going to give a brief background on how we came about 
uh, using OpenStreetMap here at the university and also how we went about engaging various stakeholders. Uh, we initially started with a project on identifying uh, open spaces in Ventuk in order to propose for social housing. Because so what we do see within the city uh, is this um, disparity in the planning where you have um, most of the low income areas uh, on the periphery of the city. And then you have obviously the majority of the formal um, and sort of um, high cost areas on one side. But then there are also sort of pockets around the city of land that is currently not being used. So we thought we could do an analysis by creating a, a simple tool that can run using OpenStreetMap data to identify open spaces and make a proposal to the to the local city council on on um, prob probably getting the the land and and sort of um, uh, starting with a project on on social housing. But then there were gaps within the data online, and we thought that if we we start an active mapping project, it could support our analysis. Um, and then the second part on why we need, wanted to use OpenStreetMap data is this issue on informal settlements. Uh, as many of you might be aware, is we have a population of about 2.5 million people in the entire country. I, I know for some people they would say that that's a neighborhood <laughs> in their cities. But yeah, so the entire country population-wise, we are about 2.5 million. And uh, the city of Vinduk has about 600,000 uh, people where about 40% of that population is currently living in formal settlements. And all this data was collected by the Shek Dulles Federation communities through this manual process of, of, of um, identifying houses, mapping informal settlement boundaries. But what we also see with the process of manually collecting data is that you don't have a, a, a way where you can easily and quickly share this information. So that's why we also decided to, to engage with the Namibia Housing Action Group and the Shek Dollars Federation to see how we can partner through our existing memorandum of understanding. And the, the call for the grant was, um, was timely because it could provide us with that additional support to get youth members that are affiliated to the Shek Dollars Federation to work with students at the university because we have the facilities and the students also have um, the youth from the informal settlements have the knowledge on, on, their, on their communities. So we got, we, we got the grant and we started working on the earlier this year, just to start creating an understanding around how um, the, the, our partners can use Open um, ID Editor and, and contribute to OpenStreetMap. So thus far, we, we started with a, a, a collaboration that is still under where we are not yet clear on, 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 on how we can uh, increase um, support across the board in the country on, on using the data for, for mapping informal settlements. Because what we see within the, the city is this huge demand for housing um, where we have had issues where um, local authorities, not just in Ventuk, have come up and said it was a challenge for them to to clearly indicate how many open spaces or land is available for allocation. So what we thought is that once we have this data, we can visualize what is the current occupation of informal settlements, where are the open spaces within the city, and how do we get the data from OpenStreetMap and start integrating it within our, our mapping projects. So that's, that's what our project is about. Firstly, creating an OpenStreetMap community that was, I think, not actively uh, in operation uh, from 20, 2019. So last year and this year has been one of our most active, uh, active uh, um, projects or activities where we are creating awareness around the importance of contributing data on OpenStreetMap, and then also getting this data and integrating it within um, land information systems using um, QGIS, and then also further manipulating this data offline. And, and I'm also quite happy to see um, that Mr. Emmanuel Tembo is here. We, we had a small project where we, we, we discussed uh, issues around innovative approaches to land administration in Zambia. So I'm also looking forward to, to hearing a bit more on, on how they are using 
what is this thing? Where they are using the the, the OpenStreetMap data within their survey process? Uh, because for us right now, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a new thing. Um, a lot of people don't know about OpenStreetMap, although um, what we do see the knowledge is more within the people that are more that are within the GIS or geographic information system science field. So we don't have a knowledge and awareness around um, citizens actively contributing. And maybe an additional point that I'd share is that although the OpenStreetMap data is not actively being used, uh, at least to my knowledge, the, the base map is used uh, as part of um, uh, OpenStreetMap is used as a base map within our our national data infrastructure. So that you can access at digitalnamibia.na, I think. I'll share the link here in the chat. So yeah, that's what we have been talking about or, or dealing with uh, in, in, in terms of um, sharing and creating awareness around contributing OpenStreetMap, contributing to OpenStreetMap. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that as well. Um, and now we, we can move back to, to the east and recent. Uh, so one of the biggest communities within the region is the Tanzanian SM community. Uh, I mean, we tend to see a lot of different activities happening within the country in the OSM space. So we're just wondering if you could share with us some of the factors that have contributed to um, this growth uh, that maybe other communities and even people who are leading sort of uh, not just the same communities, but uh, OSM mapping projects. Um, any factors that you think uh, have contributed to this? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Laura, for for such a good question. Um, so my response to that would be, I think, dividing it into three points. Uh, the first one would be uh, generosity of the humanitarian open state map team in providing the community micro grants uh, and support the OSM communities. As we all know that HOT has been engaging uh, with local OSM communities since 2017 by providing uh, the micro grants. And we have seen, for the, sake, uh, for the case of Tanzania, we have seen uh, um, a few um, OSM communities and networks you know, uh, benefiting from uh, getting the micro grant and, and, and being able to establish the, um, the activities on the ground. And I can say, I can give a quick example is uh, the Cloud to Map Tanzania of which I've seen Janet here. And also one of, uh, one of the uh, unique one is also the Hope for Girls and Women in Tanzania. So both have uh, leveraged the chance to get the micro grant and being able to uh, establish uh, activities on the ground, like training people on how they could uh, populate data to open street map and make the maps. And at the end of the day, um, the idea is to apply the maps for themselves. Like we all know that OSM is, uh, you know, uh, is, is made out of a community. And it means when you contribute data, you may be having access to it and everyone has access to, to the same data. So for this, uh, for this case, Crowd to Map and Hope, uh, and Hope for Girls and Women have, um, you know, used the, 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 the chance to actually build the map and then use the map uh, the maps to actually uh, uh, end FGM, like trying to reduce the cases of uh, female genital mutilation as well as early marriages uh, in, in areas of interest. And, and in another point, you know, within the same micro grants is uh, through um, the support from HOT, OMDGZ is currently, uh, you know, uh, working with OSM communities in Tanzania to provide uh, the same micro grants, which is more customized into, uh, you know, the Tanzanian communities. So right now we are like at the at, at at this moment, we are funding around seven OSM communities, and we are hoping to also uh, expand the uh, to expand the list from seven to at, at least more than ten or twelve uh, OSM communities, so that they can be able to. Uh, apply uh, the, the, I mean, use the funding to do the mapping and also uh, connect the applications on the ground, like resolving any challenges that the uh, communities are facing. The second point is uh, establishment of youth mappers chapters. I think we have seen and uh, we, we have seen since uh, the introduction of youth mappers, 
we have seen most of the university students are more engaged, are more interested to join the chapters and, you know, uh, establish themselves into, uh, into uh, creating data and also, uh, you know, being able to train others to use the maps um, uh, for, for decision making. And same case in Tanzania, we have more than 10 uh, uh, youth MAPA chapters across the country, which has been uh, very active in organizing mapathons and trainings within their fellow students and also outside the, the, the universities. But also they have been part of the uh, programs uh, through youth mappers and hot programs, such as Let Girls Map and also uh, Average Maps as well. So these have somehow, uh, you know, been uh, very helpful in making sure that like youth and, you know, community members are more active Engage, uh, engaged into, into OSM. The last point will be um, on the success of community mapping projects uh, that have that has uh, like had involved university students and community members. So I'll give a quick exam example of Raman Huria, which is a, a community mapping for federal residence in uh, in Dar es Salaam, and it also extended to Mwanza as well, which was mainly uh, looking at possibilities to work with universities. Uh, and university students plus the community members on collecting the data, useful data that could be uh, used for, uh, you know, making decision against flooding, against workforce, and some other uh, humanitarian, um, you know, uh, uh, of such nature. So all these kind of engagement have somehow, you know, um, made, you know, youth and community members, even, even if it's not youth, but most people have been engaged and have been, uh, you know, getting more interested into OSM and mapping and using data and so forth because of, you know, all these kind of engagement that they have been a part of. Um, and in, in some cases, I think some of the uh, successes are always around, uh, you know, some of the interested donors like the World Bank, for example, um, um, uh, the UNDP, uh, United uh, Nations, uh, uh, um, and, and as well as I, I think the WFP as well, uh, whom, uh, you know, looking at the opportunities and potentials of OSM and the data and maps, and they are now investing more into making sure that they can harness, um, you know, uh, the, the, the potential of it and make use out of it through engaging people and, and, and uh, getting the products as maps. Yeah, back to you, uh, Rola. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Innocent. Uh, Truly, uh, the, the OSM community in Tanzania is a community of even more communities within the country. And also glad to hear that it's all through this tiny little efforts that we are able to see even the national community growing. Uh, so I'll move back to you, Elijah. Um, a number of times we tend to see uh, OSM communities working with uh, the Federation and also uh, Red Cross and Christian societies in cases where we um, there's a disaster or an incident, so just wondering, um, are there cases? Uh, are, are these national societies able to work um, with some communities out of this scope, and how can this be done? Um, so, Elijah. Uh, thank you, Laura, for that question. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, most of the national societies uh, they have leveraged on, uh, on 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 OSM communities, and this has been evident uh, uh, through, like uh, for example, Kenya Red Cross, which has been uh, working closely with OSM Kenya, and as well like other national societies uh, in, uh, in uh, like in Uganda and the Africa region. But uh, one of the one of the goals for the for the federation is to enhance. Uh, one of the one of the strategies called the uh, red trade, like uh, how do we strengthen uh, uh, our national society to be able to leverage to uh, other communities like OSM Kenya uh, youth mappers, and with this uh, how you are doing is uh, is either through mappathons, whereby we invite uh, work close with the OSM communities whereby they can be able to uh, support national societies either mapping uh, areas that are affected or either for prepared as purposes. And in this, uh, this has been evident uh, whereby other, other OSM communities are, are able to go train national societies in areas that the, the national society is not good at. But uh, in a way, we are, we are looking forward to strengthening uh, our data literacy as well uh, in national societies. 
the leveraging uh, in this community. How can we get our volunteers on board? Because uh, we have 1.69 million volunteers, but how can we get them to volunteer more? Is now this is whereby OSM community uh, OSM comes in as a way of digital uh, digital volunteerism. So we are looking it's a, we are looking into uh, enhancing strengthening capacity not only for the national societies. How can we enhance the capacity of volunteers? And that is through OSM. And that is what we've been working closely uh, with OSM communities, uh, other national societies that are good like Kenya Red Cross or peer to peer support. But mostly uh, uh, OSM communities have been of uh, great assistance to national societies, either when it comes to preparedness and as well when it comes to uh, doing response to disasters. Over to you, Laura. Uh, thank you so much. And I'm glad you could confirm that uh, uh, as well, uh, OSM communities could, could as well reach out to national societies in cases where there are projects that they think the national society would benefit from uh, in terms of data. Uh, and also just uh, in terms of collaboration as well. Um, and I, I guess you can move back to Mr. Tembo, uh, back to the discussion regarding uh, the establishment of a national special data infrastructure in Zambia. Um, as, we, as I was sharing earlier, I, I think there are only countable countries within the region that have this. So just wondering how, how um, this was able to uh, actually be implemented or is still being implemented at the moment? Like what are some of the factors or efforts that led to this? And uh, how further can OSM communities uh, or even just OSM data be used to support the implementation? I think you had mentioned uh, in your case, uh, OSM data was used at the first stages. Uh, at, is, it, is there room for more use uh, in, even as the, um, NSDI is being implemented further. Yes, uh, yes, indeed. Um, I think from the point of uh, inception, the, we know that an NSDI is essentially, um, if you like, an infrastructure that should help us in sharing information uh, and in making sure that um, the information that we share is of the same quality or good quality, and that we do have the capacity as a people to be able to, to run with the system. Uh, and so it was recognized earlier um, uh, that we needed to have this uh, platform, more like having a road really. Uh, to get to point B, you need to have a, a good road. And so how do we make sure that we have that good road, especially with spatial data? And so there was that recognition, and unfortunately, government recognized that there was need um, to do this, and so summoned its own financial resources to establish this uh, uh, infrastructure. And uh, at the point now where we are, we are basically looking at how we can um, uh, leverage spatial data to make decisions, because we believe data informs uh, decision. Quite often, um, decisions have been made outside of the knowledge of the data that needs to, to inform that decision. And spatial data is very uh, peculiar to uh, informing geographical space and also in, in, in the end, informing geographical decisions. And so I think the national, national, national development planning recognized that this is important. And as a result, um, we are looking now at including all players. For example, there's a disaster management unit. Um, we can talk of ZAMSTATS, the Zambia Statistical Agency. We can talk of the Electoral Commission. All of them now are either contributing uh, to data or basically collecting data from the National Spatial Data Infrastructure. So we see a, a number of players then when we have the OSM data, which will be rich in terms of, for instance, um, the location as well as um, the information about the location. Quite often we can take an aerial image, for example, but it will not tell us uh, who is sitting on that, uh, in that space. Uh, so uh, the volunteer 
information can help us now identify that uh, there there's uh, the village for Mr. Tembo. Uh, and that information then begins to inform um, decision making. That there's not only a village, for instance, but there's a boho which is run by uh, X, Y, or Z. So that kind of information, when collected uh, properly and uh, put into a system, uh, could inform decision making. We envisage a, a lot of other players uh, who support, who continue to support this. For instance, the utility companies look for such kind of data. Um, companies uh, like uh, Rural Electrification Authority, they are looking for this kind of data to help them make those decisions. So we think that uh, OSM can assist a great deal in ensuring that uh, Whenever a decision to say where, where are we going to locate the next two, uh, power line uh, will be done with the assistance of information that will be uh, sitting within the NSDI. Thanks, Laura. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tembo. And also just amazing to see how OSM data uh, will is useful and will be useful on all the studies when it comes to developing uh, an NSDI. And uh, as we are almost winding up, uh, I'll get back now to Ms. Royal. Um, as we work uh, in the mapping space and you use platforms like OpenStreetMap that are digital platforms, and uh, in the digital world, things keep changing every day. So could you share with us some of the new developments and innovations that are uh, occurring in the geospatial sector and how you think this would uh, further affect or impact OSM as it is at the moment. All right, uh, I'm not sure if I could answer or I could do justice to the rest of the question, but I will, I will take it from, from any direction. So uh, what we have seen, especially speaking from a land administration uh, perspective is the current uh, use of uh, UAVs, uh, for a better word, drones, in the capturing of, of cadastral data. We've also seen this uh, push for, for machine learning um, and also integrating OSM data within, within uh, data uh, databases. From, from the work that we are doing here is the new development in using OSM data in identifying um, access networks for households uh, within informal settlements. So I'm not speaking within the general uh, geospatial field, I'm speaking more specifically within the land administration uh, field. What we see is that there are opportunities in, in using OpenStreetMap data for capturing cadastral boundaries. So we do see uh, the examples that Mr. Emmanuel Tambo has provided do provide uh, some interesting case studies that uh, countries like Namibia can also start adopting. But then within the, the emergence of open um, using volunteer geographic data, such as the, obviously the OpenStreetMap platform, is also issues around quality that has always come into question. Uh, for example, in our project with the city of Ventuk, where we are looking at uh, working with um, OpenStreetMap data for uh, planning informal settlements, there's always been an issue on the, the question on what is the quality of the data. And what we see could be a solution is in answering how we can set the standards at the beginning of any mapping project, be it a mapathon or uh, verifying the data on the ground. And then later on, what I think from, from our side, what we are proposing is local authorities or government to take data that is already on OpenStreetMap and download it and find ways to to upgrade uh, and, and also use um, or add more um, is it data points rather than just keeping it on OpenStreetMap. Uh, for us uh, here uh, at the university, OpenStreetMap has always been um, one of the, the themes or topics that we, subjects that we discuss, not in broad, because we don't have like a specific subject, for example, that focuses on creating a familiarization around volunteer geographic data. It's always more of a topic within a, a broader course. So we're also seeing at how do we start pushing and integrating the discussion on volunteer, volunteer geographic data within a broader subject. 
uh, um, at the university. For example, within our department, we have moved towards uh, having OpenStreetMap uh, be part of a course which is called the Innovative Approaches to, to Land Administration. So this is where we are familiarizing uh, students on the use of OpenStreetMap and also the, the, the use of the social thing and domain model that is greatly supported by the GLT and here at NAST. So that's what I've seen as, as some of the, the emerging issues. Being able to use data that is freely and openly available uh, in supporting cadastral uh, uh, data capturing. And then also in this, um, this push for using uh, OpenStreetMap data in supporting land recordation and land certification processes uh, within, urban, within the urban areas here in Namibia. So Laura, I think basically that's, that's what I had to share with regard to the developments within, within the, I would say, geospatial field, but specifically focusing on, on land administration. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think you've, you've well answered it, uh, and it totally makes sense that uh, with even with uh, innovations happening in technology, they sort of affect how we use OSM. Uh, for example, uh, a couple of years ago, when it came to enriching data on SM, one would have to use things like field papers, but now it's possible to use mobile applications. Uh, even when you're looking at the usage side, are we able to see um, uh, with the rise of things like Uber and Bolt? I think I've seen platforms like Bolt that now also have are using OSM in their in their search, which is great. Um, so thank you for that, Royal. Um, then lastly, then we uh, get to hear from Innocent again. So uh, could you share with us uh, how OMDTZ uh, was actually formed, and then uh, share about uh, one of the projects that you are currently um, conducting, the Ramani Monza project. Um, yeah. Yeah, so sorry, Rora, uh, you mean a background of OMDTG, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I think, uh, like, first thing first, um, so OMDTG was uh, registered as an NGO in 2017, like late 2017. And we were somehow operational by uh, 2018, uh, sorry, 2017 is the registration. And then 2018, uh, we started, uh, you know, some, some of the activities, but this was like, we were kind of uh, working closely with, uh, you know, the, some of the hot projects, some of the hot funded projects that were in, in the country, Tanzania. Um, so in general, the, all of the staff members that are working from uh, that are currently working with OMDTZ uh, originated from you know working with HOT since 2015 uh, and and several years uh, where I think we had somehow built um, you know a, a team of people that are fresh from school but you know uh, are more into GIS more into data and mostly uh, having a background of you know uh, urban planning and as as well as uh, environment. Um, so we have been operational for somehow like uh, around like four, four years now. Um, and as I said, I think, uh, the transition started in 2019 where OMDTZ was kind of, you know, also bidding for projects outside, you know, uh, the arrangement we had with HOT. So OMDTZ was like started, uh, getting some of the projects for its own. Uh, and these were more into, uh, like same stuff mapping uh, gis data analysis uh, maps making training and and innovation as well um right now i think uh we are wrapping up a project which we refer to as raman mwanza so um <clears throat> sorry so mwanza is a region is one of the region in tanzania and uh so it just means uh you know a region uh, but raman it means uh map so we are building we like in collaboration with the humanitarian open street map team and um, a Kenyan company called Spatial Collective, we were collaborating to uh, work in Mwanza uh, uh, to collect data sets uh, that could help in uh, understanding uh, the fraud scenario. And also uh, there is a high case of uh, rock falls. So Mwanza is uh, regarded as a rock city, which means it's like it's um, 
it's made out of like the, the, the area itself is made out of hilly uh, rocks that are, you know, surrounding the area. So one of the challenge is, you know, rocks, you know, falling from the high places to, uh, to, to, to go down, uh, down, uh, down places to, um, I mean, sometimes, sometimes it destroys buildings and, you know, uh, cause more harm. So the project itself was more into, uh, as I said, flooding and rockfall mapping. Um, and we were coordinating this with uh, some of the universities there because one of the um, one of the uh, arrangement we have is we um, we work with university students, uh, we train them how they can uh, use the open source software software to collect data, uh, and also we uh, we train them how they could also uh, recruit community members uh, so that they can harness the local knowledge from the community members. They can work together. Uh, to collect this information and you know create the maps of these areas um so the project itself started in uh, last year uh, around uh, september and right now we are actually wrapping up a project uh, we have produced all of the data sets which includes uh you know uh, digitized buildings which which are around um i think it's around three hundred thousand. Uh, buildings uh, that were digitized, and then we made lots of surveys where we were going, uh, we, are, we are conducting some some household surveys, uh, asking people on their experience with flooding and whether they have, uh, you know, suffered uh, um, with flooding or not. And if yes, you know, collecting information like what year did, did you know, did that happen and stuff like that. Uh, so we have also made um, lots of maps that we have also shared back with the communities. And when I say communities, I mean, uh, so Tanzania is divided into, into different admin, uh, admin boundaries. So we have like the country, uh, and then we have like regions, uh, we have uh, districts or municipalities. And from there we have wards and subwards. So our modality is to share the ward boundaries uh, with the community members and community leaders so that they can be able to access the maps and make use out of the maps. Um, so that is already being done at the moment. And also one of the things uh, we did was uh, having um, like a share back stakeholders meeting where we uh, invited most of the uh, government and public and private uh, companies uh, uh, involved in, 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 in flooding, you know, uh, anyone that is involved in, you know, whether decision making or otherwise uh, responding to flooding and other uh, calamities. So we invited them for a workshop um, for around five days where we were training them on how they could access the maps, how they could also make the maps for themselves, how they could access uh, and, and, and create ODK forms so that they can, uh, like they can create some sort of response uh, activities on the ground and stuff like that. And this was more like uh, making people aware of the products that are out there uh, and also making sure that they have access to everything that is being uh, produced as part of the project and as an entry strategy uh, I think uh, apart from the fact that we worked with community members and university students to collect data but the idea is to also leave capacity behind so that they can still be able to collect data uh, update the information at whatever uh, you know uh, request or otherwise uh, need they, they, they may they may have and then be able to uh, make use out of the maps that are produced um, yeah, that's it, Rora. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Innocent, for, for your answer. Very comprehensive. Um, and also, I'll take this chance as well to wrap up the panel discussion and thank all the panelists for joining us, uh, for sharing with us today. So uh, Mr. Tembo, Mr. Elijah, Mr. Innocent, and Ms. Royal. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing. And also, uh, I believe all the questions that were asked on the chat section have been answered by the panelists as well directly. I'll also just request them to share any links that might be useful to, to the attendees as well. So if it's for your projects or your organizations or communities, I think that would be useful. And uh, now I'll pass it on to Geoffrey, who would like to share some um, announcements uh, from, the, from the hub to everyone. But even before you start, Geoffrey, there was one question by Becky Candy on chat. So she was asking, how many hubs does HOT have? How many have been? 
how many have been launched and how many more are there to come. So as you share the announcements, you can start with that. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Laura. So some uh, quick announcements as we uh, wrap up uh, from the hub. Um, one is uh, we are going to be launching uh, community grants uh, in September, uh, right next month. So yeah, please do watch out. Uh, we're going to be having three uh, types of grants we are launching. So community engagement grants uh, that will provide funding uh, up to uh, $2,400 uh, for communities to facilitate uh, community meetups, uh, mapping parties, trainings. Um, then we do have community growth and resilience grants that will uh, be between 10,000 and 10,000 USD for uh, to help communities grow uh, their activities and impact. And also bigger grants uh, between 30 to 45K uh, that will be around forming uh, consortiums with data users, uh, the government, NGOs, to make sure that the data that is collected uh, is being put to use uh, for bigger impact and also to be used for uh, decision making um, to kind of improve lives. So please do watch out and looking forward to uh, engaging uh, with the applications. Um, the other yeah, announcement is the uh, Monthly Mapathon uh, next month on uh, 4th September. We are mapping Malawi, uh, the warm heart of Africa. So you are all invited, uh, whether you're a beginner mapper or an experienced mapper, you're all welcome to uh, join us. It will be on a Saturday from uh, 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, Malawi time. Uh, registration is uh, on Eventbrite, and I'll drop the link in the chat. And lastly, the Start of the Map Africa is happening uh, in November 29, uh, 19th to 21st, um, under the theme, leaving no one behind emerging from a global uh, pandemic. So it's a number one meeting for all uh, OSM communities and contributors uh, from Africa, um, where we shall share and learn uh, from each other. Uh, the team is finalizing on the program, uh, which will be announced soon and also to open up for uh, registration. Um, yeah, and with that, uh, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who has uh, uh, turned up today as we launch uh, the Open Mapping Hub Eastern and Southern Africa. And please do follow us on uh, Twitter and, and Facebook. I'll drop us an email if you have any feedback uh, you'd like to give us. Um, thank you so much to uh, the panelists and also Laura for uh, moderating the session and hosting the, uh, the event. And thank you to all the participants. Uh, looking forward to interacting with uh, you all going forward. Thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.